I want to ask you if you're willing to fight for the church. I'm asking. Are you really willing to fight for this place? Because I'm just let you know. I talked to a couple people this morning. The last three months have been, for me, it's like I'm in a, it's like I'm in a, a you've seen the rescue things where the guys were up against the tide, the tides were beating against the rocks. You know what I'm talking about? They couldn't swim out, they couldn't get out. Someone had to come in a helicopter and get them out. It seems like I just get beat against the rocks. Because the devil, listen, I called out some spiritual things in this church that have that have been controlling this church for a long time, and the devil doesn't like that. And I don't care what the devil likes or don't like. I, that's, I don't care. But I'm just telling you that's the truth. And it has stirred up some stuff spiritually. And listen, I'm not trying to get all so heavenly minded. I'm no earthly good. But there are things going on in the spirit realm that you have you don't know about because I'm not telling anybody about. And there's some things going on, and the devil has, has brought some spirit things into place. I, I don't know if you've noticed, but the church, listen, I, I feel like we're, we're, we're in a battle. And I, and I feel like, I, I feel like the devil's trying to take control of some things and some people's lives, and I'm not willing to let him. And, I, and, and I'm, not, I'm not willing to let you just go out there and, and give me some keys and say, don't kill yourself. But I'm just trying to, does that make any sense to anybody? I'm tr what I'm trying to say is this, is that the devil has tried to put a foothold in this place. All right. The, what, what he's, by me calling out the spiritual things that I think were, that, that was just two, I might go to the other two, but I got to fight these two first. Uh, the, the spiritual things that, are, that have always been prevalent, let me just share something with you. I don't know if you noticed that Janet plays a piano and I play a, that's a piano, it's an electric piano. Yeah. But there are times when, like we're doing congregationals, I turn mine down and let her start. You know why? Because she's the lead. There are times when we're doing praise and worship, I will start the song because I'm leading. And so, does that make sense to anybody? Because when Jim's up here leading in congregationals, it is Janet, it is her, she starts the song, not me. Though I can play them, it's her responsibility to do that because she is doing, it is my responsibility to turn my instrument down because I'm not supposed to be, I'm not talking about the volume of the music, I'm talking about the, the stepping to, the, to where your, your position is. Does that make any sense? Though I'm the pastor of this church and I have every right to play anything I, it is, it is not my position to turn my, my, my music up louder and start before she does because I'm the pastor. Who cares? That is her job right now to be in that lead position. It is my job to recognize that she is in the lead position and to step. That's just an example. I'm not saying that, does that make any sense? Yeah. And so what I'm trying to get across to you this morning is, is simply this. When I call out some things and, then, and, then, and it's the truth, and you know it's the truth, it's because when I said it, everybody goes, yeah, yeah, that's right, Brother Jeff, that's right. See, if you didn't believe that, you shouldn't have said yeah, because that makes me think that you understand what I'm talking about. Okay, so let me just share something with you this morning that are you really ready to fight for this place? Do you love this place? enough to fight spiritual battle for it. Do you love this place enough? Now, listen, I'm not talking about our Pentecostal gymnastics. So if I can yell loud enough, I can scream loud enough, I can jump high enough, then the devil runs. The devil lets you scream, run, and jump, and then continue to do his mess. I'm talking about spiritual fighting to where you are praying and you're seeking God, not because it's Sunday, and not because it's Wednesday afternoon and I gotta come up with something. Amen. Not because it's Saturday afternoon and oh I gotta teach tomorrow. Uh -huh. Sorry, let me get you If I keep busting a letter. Not because it's my job, so I've got to do it. Are you really willing to fight for
for this place and fight for your, your status, where you're at in God? Are you really willing to fight for your soul? Amen. Amen. None of that's on here. I'm just... <laughs> that's not on here either. But you have to understand where I'm coming from. I'm tired. If I get a little emotional, you just have to bear with me because I'm tired. God's blessing me and God's strengthening me and I, and I go in and get along in my prayer closet and it's fine and everything's good and I'm not saying I'm quitting, I'm not saying everything, I'm mad, I'm not saying I'm upset. I'm just saying I'm getting tired. I don't, I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody. I, you guys that have been in ministry, you know what I'm talking about. But let me ask you a question this morning. I'll try to, that was all just for free. That was the first time Jim took off. This is for the second. <laughs> I'm going to ask you this question is why are we here? Why are we here? Why do we come to the house of God? Why are we here? What is our purpose for being on this people planet? Why are we here? Why did Jesus save us? Why? Why are we here? Uh, I had to go through a lot of painstaking stuff this week for me. You may think, well, that's just stupid. That's okay. It was for me. Did this group of believers, did we disciple anybody this week? Just ask. If you did, praise God for it. Did we cause someone to see Jesus for who he truly is this week? Or did we go, I'll see you last Sunday. Did we say, I'll see you next week? And that's the last thing we thought about God until we caught up this morning. Go, oh, Lord, it's already Sunday. I'm tired. I had to work yesterday. I worked yesterday too. Did you get up this morning? Did you, now, Wednesday, did you go, ah, it's just Wednesday. It's just Wednesday. This is the Bible study. Ain't no big deal. That is. That is. What's the scripture? Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the matter of some is, but even more so when you see that day approaching? One day. <laughs> Jesus is coming. So tired of the government trying to tell me what I can believe in, what I can't. I'm so sick of the passing laws that I don't agree with. And if I can, if the people say no, they still say yes. I'm so sick of it. I've had a belly full. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. I never used to pray that prayer and mean it. And I got a lot of family that's not saved. I got a lot of friends that aren't saved. And I'm almost to the point that. No, Jesus told the rich man, if they don't believe the prophets, they're not going to believe somebody come back from the dead. They're just not going to believe. They're just not going to do it. I love what Jesus always said, he didn't have the ears, let him hear. He never did try to coerce anybody into hearing. He said, if you want to hear, hear. If you don't want to hear, go to hell. I don't care. He didn't care, but you know what I'm saying? It's your choice. I just, I just, had, I don't know if you guys have had a belly full of that stuff yet, but I, I've had a belly full of everybody trying to tell me what I'm supposed to do and how I'm supposed to live. If I don't agree with you, then I'm a bigot. Then I guess I'm gonna be a bigot. I, I, I don't agree. You guys do what you want. I don't care. Live how you think, how you see fit. Praise God. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get up here, I'm gonna open this up, and I'm gonna preach what's in it. You can either accept it or deny it, whatever you want to do, and that's fine. I, I, I'm so tired of trying to trick people into getting saved. I'll leave. <laughs> that's a crazy message, huh? I didn't start it. That's all introduction. But did we did we live, did we win anybody to the Lord this this week? Did we show anybody the let me ask you a question. Did you show the love of Christ? I'm sure you probably did. I'm not saying you didn't. See, when I ask this question, it doesn't mean it's a negative answer. It doesn't have to follow. You can say, yes, I did, which is great. I'm just asking you, did you 
Show somebody the love of Christ this week. Did you disciple somebody? Did you lead somebody? Did you show them a, a loving, caring Jesus that... See... Maybe you did this week. But I did. I taught some, I taught some kids Wednesday. I, I, I tried to disciple some kids Wednesday. I did, I did that kind of stuff. But I was too busy. How about you? What's why? I got too busy this week. I got, I got myself entangled in some stuff this week. How about you? I know you guys never get entangled. Y'all all say it's perfect. But me, I'm talking about me. I got all entangled in some stuff of life this week. And before I looked up, it was, I'd been at the church. And I thought, well, I got two more days I can come to the church. It's all right. And I've been to the church twice. Well, no, it's Saturday, Jeff. You got to get your, you got to get all your T's crossed and your I's dotted, son. I had everything scratched out. But you know what I'm talking about, Brother Buddy? When you wake up and it's Saturday, you go, oh, wow, what happened to Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? What happened to those days? So you say, brother, if you weren't down here, no, I, I work. See, you don't get this by now lay me down to sleep. You don't get this by holding on to say, well, I'll just pray, I'll, I'll find something in an old message. No, no, no. You won't find this in any old message I got. Because I'm not, I'm not going to come out here and, and regurgitate some pablum that, what I, that I preached six weeks ago. Because you don't remember it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get a fresh word from God. I want God to, to give me a fresh word for you because you deserve that. You don't deserve to be just some old book or board. You deserve that. Listen, you deserve to have the best that I can give you. You deserve that because you're the best people that I know. You are. Uh, you, I know you, you guys are the best people that I know and you deserve what, I'm, what, I, what God has given you. And you don't get this by now let me down to sleep a little shimmy shimmy prayer. God help me, uh, give me something. Oh, okay, I think I'll preach about that. That's not how you get this. You get this by not sleeping at night. You get this by uh, laying awake and praying. You get this by falling on your face. That's how you get this. You don't get this by just hanging out in church. You get this by having this luggage under your eyes. And your body being tired. That's how this comes. I'm sorry, I didn't do it anyway. I was busy this week. I was busy chasing after mammon instead of mankind. I don't know about you, but that's what God says you can't serve the two. You either, you either love one or hate the other, hate the one, love the other. And so I had to follow my face before God said, God, I'm sorry. I got entangled in some stuff this week. I got entangled in, and God became, yes, he's important to me. And, he's all, and I try to always keep God first, but I'm not perfect and neither are you. So don't you look at me cross-eyed with your halo crooked on your horns. I can't believe it. But this week I got entangled in some stuff because it was a busy week for me. Listen, but every time I read this book, I can't find this modern church that I see people have. You know they started a hookah church? You know what a hookah church is? They sit around and smoke hookah. And people go on like crazy. That's just stupid. That's just silly. Anything you do silly, I'm going to go to. I guarantee you. It's unbelievable to me. I read that and I said, you've got it. see in our churches. And, I'm all, and my focus has so much been reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out. And God directed me to the pew. I said, what are you talking about, God? Those are the people that are reaching out. And what do you mean? I'm not saying everybody that's sitting in pews is lost. I mean, I've sitting in pews all my life. I'm not saying that. Please don't just misconstrue my words. Please don't say, Jesse, we're all going to hell. That's not what I said. 
The devil's a liar if you said that. What I'm saying is this. Did I not say, Lord, Lord? Did I not cast out devils in your name? Did I not heal the sick in your name? And Jesus says, depart from me, for I never knew you. You got remember that scripture? Okay. Not everyone that cries out, Lord, Lord, does he know. And I sit here and I, and I stand here before you this morning and I look and I say, God, what? What else can I do? I, 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 I don't want anybody in this place to be lost. I don't want anybody in this place to miss out from God. I don't want anybody in this place to say, oh, you know what? You know, I, I believe that, but I don't believe this part. I just, I know that this is the truth. And listen, a guy told the preacher the other day, he said, I know what you're telling me is the truth. Oh, it was Rick. Gordon. So the guy said, I know what you're telling me is the truth, but I just don't believe it. That's just dumb. That's just dumb. I'm trying to get back on the subject here. I, I read the book, and this book we call the Bible, and I can't find this modernized American eyes gospel that they preach and, and I look at it and I say God show me God show me the repeat of prayer after me verse show me the I can write my name on the roll verse I, I just show that to me I, I need to know that and, and I listen and he said listen the Christianity is, is Christianity that's what the Lord spoke to me you guys can take it or leave it is Christianity with no strings attached. What I mean by that is this. I can come Sunday, I can come sometimes on Wednesday, and just leave it. There's no sacrifice. There's no responsibility. It's just, I can come to church, and I'm okay. That's God, no, that's not right. God did not save you. Jesus did not die on the cross so you can go to church. You can go to church and be lost. He didn't, he didn't save you so you can not do anything. He, 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 didn't, he saved you so that, for a purpose. He saved you for a reason. Does anybody understand me? Y'all looking at me like oh, I'm just speaking this trash. Okay, pass up your little <laughs> Hear me. Christianity, this is what he spoke to me. You guys can take it. Christianity without strings. Voyeurism at its finest. I can watch this, but I don't have to be part. I can sit on a pew for the rest of my life and wait for the Lord to come and not ever. No, no, that's not Christianity. And I'll get to it in just a minute, but you guys have to hang with me for just a minute. Christianity is more than getting saved. Christianity is taking up your cross daily and following after Jesus. Let me share something with you. The rich young ruler, do you anybody remember that? Everybody gets hung up on the rich stuff. But the rich young ruler, it says, Jesus said he loved him. Jesus loved him, right? Read the story. The only verse in the Bible where love and the cross are the same verse. Jesus loved him, but he could not give away his stuff. And that's where everybody stops. But that's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, sell all your stuff, take up your cross and follow me. It, he did not want to leave his stuff and pick up his cross. Because Christianity to him was just another one of the religions where I can do it. I can just be, I can be saved and I can do whatever I need to do and not be part of anything. I can just, I can just say that I'm a Christian. That's what's wrong. That's why, that's why Christians are laughing, getting laughed at because, and rightfully so, because we say we're Christian and, and, and we don't have any fruit of it. If I could get this out, if we would ever get this, it would change us. 
Christianity without any strings attached. We're just supposed to get saved, get baptized, get filled with the Holy Ghost, sit in the church for 30 or 40 years, and wait to go to heaven. No. You say no, but how many people do it? Good. I'm going to get back up here and I'm going to be good. Is there anything wrong with that? No, there's nothing wrong with being saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized, and sitting in a church for 30 or 40. We need you. I'm not saying to be gone. We need you. And I'm glad you're here because we need you to help do some things in the church. We need, listen, if you've been saved that long, you ought to be able to train and disciple somebody by now. Does anybody remember Dr. Cho? I don't know who Dr. Cho is. He's got the largest Pentecostal church, I believe it's in South Korea. You can only go to his church for five, six years tops before you have to go start something else. You can't come to his church year after year after year after year without starting a ministry. He said, if you can't learn everything you need to learn within five or six years, then you're not learning. Because he has so many people, Brother Ken, that want to come to his church, we need thousands of people. They have so many people want to come to this church, they have to try to make room for new people to come in. So they expect you to go start a new work and reach out somewhere within five or six years. That's incredible. That sounds foreign to us. It sounds foreign to us. But can I share something with you? How many have been here longer than a day and a half? Okay. How long? How many have been here for, I don't know, 20 years? 15, 20, okay. You know, and I know, and when this church was at its best, we had people leaving all the time to start ministry. We had people all the time God would say, you are going here. You are going to Alaska. You are going to Alaska. You and David Tani, you guys are going to wherever you guys went. God, Ronnie, you're going to Shawnee. You guys are here. You guys are going here. You guys are going here. You're, you're not sitting here. You're going there. When this church was at its best, ministries were leaving like crazy. We were leaving. Listen, we were losing the best we had. That's the truth. You guys are going to Fort Gibson. You guys are going to wherever to, to start the mission church. You got, you know, like all that stuff happened. When we were at our best, because God was saying, I need you, I need you, I need you, and I need you. And yes, it was hard to lose them. But can I talk to somebody who has lost children out of their family but because they moved off? Not because they died. Wasn't it fun? No. I dread my children leaving. Now, sometimes I want to knock the top off their head off. But I, I, just, I, I dread them leaving my house. It's not fun. And listen, and I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get across something. And I'll read scripture in a minute, so don't get nervous. Okay. But I, I'm trying to get something across to you. Is that the church is not supposed to be a place where nothing ever goes out of it. Have you ever wondered why you're skilled at some of the things you're skilled at? Amen. Amen. Have you ever thought, eh, that isn't much. Anybody can do that. No, they can't. No, they can't. If, they, if you have said that, the devil is a liar. Listen, you were made with these gifts to help reach people, reach people's lives, and disciple them for Christ. That's why. Can you fish? You were given that ability to reach somebody's life by fishing. Okay. Can you sing? How about that girl that is a she? She she, does, she can sing, but she's too afraid to sing. But you can mentor her and disciple her to where she's the next worship leader here. Instead of sitting on a pew for 15 years, still with the same fears, still with the same hangouts, still with the same problems, because it's my job. I'm going to sing, and don't you, nobody else going to sing but me. All right. I told you I'm going to be good a lot. All right. Have you ever thought, listen, have you ever thought anything? Can you sing? Can you play music? It's time to use that to. To mentor somebody. Can you can you rebuild cars? Well, that's not anything. How spiritual is that? There's a young man out there that needs somebody to disciple them, and that's an entryway into their life is to help them help you rebuild the car. Amen. 
See, you weren't blessed with these gifts just simply so you could make your favorite car back to normal. You were blessed with these gifts for a reason, to intro infiltrate somebody's life. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Can you teach? Listen. Can you teach? All these things were given to make disciples. If you want to, if you want to go somewhere, go with me to Matthew chapter four, verse nineteen. And I'll say I read a scripture just forty minutes in. Matthew four nineteen. Listen. I'm trying to hurry because it's already. If you're taking medicine at noon, you got seven minutes. All right. Here we go. And he that saith to them, and he saith unto them, Follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. Let's go back to eighteen. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. You think that Jesus didn't see what they were doing? He said, come follow me. And what was the verse 19, please? Come follow me. He said, I'll do what? Isn't it amazing? Jesus didn't say, come follow me, I'll make you a tent maker. Isn't that amazing that Jesus used what they were doing to infiltrate their life? Isn't, listen, isn't it amazing that Jesus used what they were doing to talk to them and to speak to them? Follow me. Why them? Number one, they were available. Are you available for the Lord? Ooh, Jesus. I'm just going to preach and then it can just come where it goes. Why them? They were available. Are you available? Am I available? Or am I too busy? So if I'm too busy, then I'm too busy. I don't like having to repent because I'm busy. I don't. I don't like having to change my mind because I'm too busy. I don't like being my, my body being tired because I'm too busy. I don't like my mind being tired because I'm too busy. I don't like all that because, listen, I want to be available. Whenever God says to do something, I want to be able to say, yes, yes, sir, I'm going to do it. 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 Listen, number two, they were willing. They were willing. Are you willing? Amen. Well, it depends on what it is, don't it? Let's just be real. <coughs> I told the teenager in class today, I would rather them tell me that they don't pray than to lie to me and say they do. Because I can deal with that because it's the truth. But to, not to tell, to tell me, oh yeah, I pray six times a day, liar. Don't lie to me. We pray when we want something. They say, no. Okay. I had to write it. Okay. And so they pray when they want something. I would rather the church be honest. And when he says, are you available? Ask sometimes. Are you willing? Depends on what it is. I need to get back up here now. Depends on what it is, doesn't it? If I'm going to get some glory out of it, I'll do it. Fun to come to church on Sunday morning. Hear me. Am I willing? It depends. Let's be truthful. I'm available. Maybe. I'm willing if it's not too hard. God, if you expect me to give up everything, I don't know if I'm willing for that. God, if you expect me to give up everything in my life, I don't know if I'm available for that. But if I'm just willing and available, number, number, number three, they were dissatisfied where they were. How do you know that? Mark chapter 1, verse 17. Mark chapter 1, verse 17. I'm trying to hurry and get you out of here. I beat you up enough today, I think. Mark chapter 1, verse 17. Jesus said unto them, come, out, come ye after me, and I will make you become fishers of men. Keep going to 19. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. When they had gone a little further than this, they saw James the son of Zebedee and his John his brother, who also were in the ship mending their tent, their nets. Sorry, go to twenty. And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. 
Now listen. Back, back to verse 17. I think it's, uh, did I say 17 first? Yeah. If you're satisfied where you're at, you won't throw down the nets and follow him. Okay. If you're satisfied with what you're doing, if some guy walks by and says, follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. You don't throw down the net, leave your dad with the hired servants and go and follow him. He didn't, have, he didn't say, come follow me here, this is what we're going to do. He just said, come follow me, but they were not satisfied. Now listen, I'm looking for some folk that aren't satisfied with the relationship they have with Jesus right now. Amen. Are you satisfied? See, because when we're satisfied, that's when we start looking about stuff to get mad about. Yeah. Because when you're satisfied, you get your eyes off of Jesus and start looking around. But if I can follow after him, I'm not satisfied. I'm dropping my nets. Dad, I'll see you later. The higher service can help you. But I'm going to follow after him. They were dissatisfied with where they had. So let me ask you a question. Are you available this morning? Are you willing and are you dissatisfied with where you're at this morning with God? Listen, in, verse, uh, in, in, uh, in Matthew chapter 8, verse 27, Jesus transformed their lives and everything and every situation. I'm trying to hurry. Hang with me this morning for just a little bit. Jesus transformed everything in their lives. Are you guys with me this morning? I don't know it seems like I'm, I'm rambling a little bit, but I, I had to share with you how, kind of how, we're, how I'm feeling this morning. Uh, I told you before, I'm a pretty transparent person. And when things are going wrong, uh, things are going against us, I'm going to tell, tell you. They were transformed by Jesus in 827. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this that even the winds and sea obey him? Their thoughts had to be transformed. There was, there was no longer Jesus, the man they were following. He was now Jesus, the Son of God, whenever they were in the ship. And all of a sudden, and they heard all the teachings, and they heard him preach, and heard all these things. And then all of a sudden, he gets up and says, Peace be still, and their thoughts were like, wow. Amen. Wow. Did you guys see that? We thought we were going to die, and Jesus said, peace be still. And even, and he said, in the verse before, he said, why do you not have any faith? I don't have faith like that. Do you? I know, it, peace be still. Okay. Whew. Everything stops. Now listen, they marveled because their thoughts were transformed. Their, their thoughts were transformed. Everything was different. Okay. What manner of man is this? The wind is see, they obey him. They heard him speak. Now they saw his authority. Their desires changed. John chapter 6, 67 and 68. John chapter 6. John chapter 6, 67, and 67 and 68. 6, 67, 67. There we go. Then said Jesus said to the twelve, We go also away. We also go away, sorry. Verse 68. Then Simon Peter answered and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Their desires had to be changed. Their desire before Jesus said, come follow me, was mending the nets and fishing. Their desire was how many fish could they catch in a day. Their, their, their desire was the condition of the boat and making sure the boat was, 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 was seaworthy. That was, their, that was their, uh, their problems, their desires of the day. When Jesus said, come follow me, then Peter said, where am I going to go, Jesus? You have the words of eternal life. Their desires changed. No longer just fishermen. But now looking for eternal life. Last one. I'll, I'll, I'll stop after this one. Their very purpose for living had been changed. They made disciples. The men who Jesus, the men whom Jesus called and said, Come follow me. They were disciples, then they made disciples. find any place in the Bible where any disciple of Jesus never discipled anyone. You can't find any place where they just met week after week and 
and a disciple. Right. I'm getting on to you. I'm just telling you what the Lord has dealt with me about this week. And it's for a long time the Lord has dealt with me about discipling people and showing them how to live for God. Not your convictions, not your length in your sleeves. But what does Jesus say? Because I'm a firm believer, if you get people's hearts right, everything else will be right. I'm a firm believer in that. I'm not a, I'm not a believer and I've got to show you how to do everything. But I can show you, if I can show you Christ, I can get God in your life. Because listen, I'm, I'm a firm believer that, that Jesus changes everything that, in, in somebody's life. Listen, I, if I came up here today and say, hey, on the way to church, uh, now and I are, we're in a wreck, we got hit by a truck. You'd say, no, you didn't. You'd be in the hospital if you got hit by a truck, stupid. That, that'd be, that was, would be accurate. So how can I say, I've had an encounter with Jesus and nothing changed? Oh, I'm, I'm a Christian. But nothing's changed. The very purpose of living, they had to make disciples. Not because they had to. Because they wanted to. Not because Brother Jeff preached and screamed it. But because it was in their heart to make disciples. It was in their heart to be Jesus follower. I, I double dog dare you to read that book and not see some things that we must do. But to do them doesn't happen, brother buddy, because I said it. It's because I fell in love with him. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Do you understand how, how important it is to not do a bunch of, well, if I, if I don't lie, I don't go to hell. Well, if I don't cheat, I don't go to hell. If I don't... And forget about that list and just fall in love with Him and do, and do what He asks us to do and be who it is He asks us to be and, and, and stand upon the Word of God. Listen. My last point, and I'll shut up. It's not my last one, but it's the last one I get. Do you understand what I'm telling you guys? Look at me. Please look at my look at my notes. Listen, I'm not angry with the church. I'm not. I'm very concerned about the discipleship ministry. So I don't want to. I don't want to be held accountable for nobody being discipled. I don't want to be held accountable for. You not knowing how to fight spiritual battles because no one ever taught you to get on your face before God until something breaks. See, I, I'm not all about the old school, but there are, there are some old school things that we need to do. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't talking about screaming and running. That's, that, that's great. Hallelujah. Knock yourself out. But listen, what I'm talking about is this. What happened in some Pentecostal circles was this. We had inspiration without any information, and it caused frustration because we screamed and hollered, but nobody ever gave us any information about how to fight and how to live for God, and then we got frustrated like we couldn't live it. What are you going to do when the devil attacks one of your children? What are you going to do when the devil attacks your church? What are you going to do when, when God says, hey, who did you disciple? Uh, well, I, what had happened was, hear me. Let me show you the last one there. Hear me. They gave up their life to follow Jesus. 
I've gone through this, this scenario of all the 12 disciples, you know how they died. Matthew burnt the stake, and Thomas killed an Indian. I'm through all that stuff. I'm not asking you to get out there and die. I'm asking you to die as here. It's not what I want. But it's not what I want. It was what I wanted. It's not what I want. It's not my will. When he said, when he, when he, when he called me and said, follow me, It wasn't about what I wanted anymore, buddy. It's not what he wanted me to do. It's not what he wanted me to do. Am I, am I there yet? Lord, no. I'm not even close. The closer I think I get, then I turn around and I'm not even close. Because there's so many things, this girl, there's so many things in my life that I grab and hang on to. I hold on to them. I don't know. I don't know why I hold on to them. I said there were sins, but it's the weights that so easily beset you. It's the things in our life. And I don't know why I hold on to them. I don't, why I don't give God everything. But listen, He loves you no matter what. Does that mean I can live a life of sin and go to heaven? That's not what that means at all. That means that until the time comes when he returns to this earth, you're judged before him. Church, understand what I'm telling you. You understand what I'm telling you? Why are we here? We're not here simply to take up space waiting on the Lord's return. I'm here to make a disciple for 3,000. 5,000, 10,000. And I'll let you know my ego is not going to be hurt when all 8,000, 10,000 don't stay here in the Villa de Cathedral. They need to be gone doing the ministry of the Lord and making disciples. They need, they need to go and make disciples for the Lord. They, they need to go and reach out from, the, for the, from this. Listen, there's nothing wrong with being the place that launches them. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm very proud of my church. I look around the state of Oklahoma. We have ministers everywhere that came from here. We do. From this little church in Seminole, Oklahoma, we have ministries worldwide. Brother Thomas in India had an opening for Pastor Turner would not be a Pentecostal Church of God missionary. And how many people does he reach? Yearly has Bible schools and churches. How many people? Had it not been for this church, we would not have a presence in Alaska. It's the truth. Had it not been for this church, would, would Tana be the pastor at Fort Gibson? Probably not. Had it not been for this place to launch people out, would God and Rhonda be still married, living for God? They got married when they were like 15 years old. The truth. Where we got people get married now, can't stay together. Then they're married since they're like 15. And they're still living for God, still working for God. Would they would they be had they not been here for a short time and learned how to be disciples? Does that make any sense to anybody but me? I, I, sometimes I look at people and they're like, what? And it's like, that, to me it's so simple. To me it is so simple. But it's hard for me evidently to get across that if we don't make disciples, then we're not doing what Jesus called us to do. And I may be following him, but I'm not doing what he's doing. And there's a scripture that says, and I can't remember off the top of my head where it's at, but this is what it says. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, don't do what I say? You said, forgive me, guys. But I think it's important to me. It's important to me that this church make disciples. It's starting with the leadership of this church discipling somebody to take your place. Well, that's my job. It's not your job. It's God's job. What's my position? It's not your position. 
position. It's God's position. You think I'm always going to be right here? No way. There's going to be somebody else standing here. Let the Lord tear us. You think you're always going to teach your Sunday school class? No. So who are you teaching to take your place? Who's stepping into that? Who are you, who's going to lead worship in the next five years? It's not going to be me. I'm just letting you know. It's not going to be me. And if that makes you mad, then get over it. I'm so sick of people being mad at me and me caring. I'm, I'm done. I love you, and if you love me, great. If you don't, great. But I'm going to tell you the truth anyway. I'm going to do my very best, and I'm going to love you. I'm going to love you if you're mad at me. I don't care. I don't care. If you're mad, I, I do care to like you. I just don't, I'm just not going to let it affect me anymore. You're not going to control me with your witchcraft anymore. You're not. It is witchcraft to control people by your mood. Hear me. Love you. I do. I'm glad you're here. I want to make disciples. I want us to be disciple makers. Starting inside the church. Make somebody a disciple. Show them how to live for God. Show them how to do the position that God's called you to do. Show them. Teach them. Bless them. And God's going to show it. Don't get married and say, don't do it that way. This is the way we do it. Is that any good at all? I can't tell. Wow. Yeah. I can't tell. Here, here. I hope you understand that I'm not mad at you. I'm not angry with you. I hope you get that. But I want you to understand we must disciple people. We must disciple people. We have to. Stand your feet with me this morning.